Joining me now is conservative attorney George Conway. He is a contributor to The Atlantic and co-host of the podcast, George Conway Explains It All. So I want to dig into all of that, the timing of the Supreme lot, Court, because yeah. a lot of us can't figure that out. But we were just talking about the ruling today. And you tweeted today, it doesn't even profess to be interpreting the text. It doesn't. And, and I think that's, a, you know, I, I, uh, Professor Eiffel said that there was a lot of overreach in the majority opinion. I think the problem here is that all nine justices underreached. They simply decided that they weren't going to apply the Constitution the way you normally apply it, which is you read the text and you, you, you try to figure out what it means in the context of the history, and you apply it. And the plain text of the constitutional provision here says that Donald Trump is disqualified. And so, I, you know, that, that's, that was the real problem with, 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 with today's decision. And I don't think that this, you know, I, I don't make much of the concurring opinions, criticism of the majority for having gone too far, because at, at the end of the day, I, I don't, See, I can't see where in the majority opinion it does more than say that states can't enforce Section 3 of the 14th Amendment against federal office holders. And, I, I, at, at, you know, the only difference I can see between that holding and what the four concurring justices, the four women, interestingly, mm -hmm. said was that they probably would have restricted it to the president and just the president. But, again, there's just no basis no textual basis, no historical basis for them in the not 14th to apply. Amendment not to apply it. And, and the, the only argument that ever is made in any of the opinions as to why you would restrict states from applying the 14th Amendment, the plain text of the 14th Amendment, the 14th Amendment contains all sorts of other provisions that apply regardless of whether Congress says, they, whatever Congress says, including the Equal Protection Clause, which prohibits race discrimination. The fact of the matter is, that there is no, there's no basis to single out Section 3 as being different from these other provisions. And they just, they, they just, they're just making it up. And all the just, justices were making it up. Why, no, though? Why? Because, You've studied this court for so long. Well, yeah, because they were terrified. Of what? Trump? The reaction? The reaction. And I, I think that's clear from Justice, Justice, Justice um, Barrett's concurring opinion. I mean, she says all of this stuff kind of, she says the quiet part out loud. We, this is not the time to amplify disagreement with, with stridency. The court has settled a politically charged case in the volatile season of a presidential election. Particularly in this circumstance, writings of the court should turn the national temperature down, not up. She's terrified. Mm. And they all were terrified, including the liberal judges. OK, who all the only difference that I can see between what the liberal judges said and what the majority said was they probably would have restricted it to the president. But if they do that, the opinion would have been even worse because at least it would have been it would have been looked like you just cherry picked the president out of a pile to to to, to save to 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 to, change, to say that the presidency is somehow special from all these. other. And there other, were other insurrectionists, and, too. But. And there are other insurrectionists. I mean, look, the, the bottom line is they were never, ever going to rule against Trump here, and not because it was Donald Trump, but because of the fear that this court, with only a limited amount of political capital these days, and that's for, we probably disagree on the reasons for that, but, we but some may agree and disagree on some of it, but they, they, they don't have the political capital to all of a sudden drop this ruling uh, on, the, on the public and say, Donald Trump can't appear on the ballot. And they were terrified. But of it, why should they, they have to worry about political capital? This is, they're the highest court in the land. They, they are the highest court in the land, but they are worried about political capital. I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a court that basically, uh, and you're going to disagree with some of what I'm about to say and agree with someone, that has basically wasted its political capital on things it should have never been involved in. It should have never been involved in abortion, for example. You'll disagree on that. But I, I say that it, it was a mistake to get involved the way they did, and even Ruth Bader Ginsburg kind of agrees with me on that. And it was a mistake to get out of it after 50 years, after telling hundreds of millions of women that they have this right. And so they've blown a lot of capital on things that really they shouldn't have been concerned with because it's not in the Constitution. This provision, Section 14, I mean, uh, uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment actually is in the Constitution, and it's clear. And they didn't have to make anything up to apply it. The only rationale they had for not applying it is to say that, oh, well, you'll get this patchwork. Some states will rule this way. Some states will rule that way. Some states will use different records. Some states will use different procedures. But that shouldn't be the court's problem. That should be the insurrectionist's problem. 
And this guy, and as you point out, the major takeaway from this case is that Donald Trump remains, because there's nothing in any of these opinions that says otherwise, what they an, didn't adjudicated, say. an adjudicated insurrectionist. He's still that, just as he's an already an adjudicated rapist. George Conway, I love your passion. I love your breakdown and your legal mind. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I appreciate it.